Men, what is your biggest handicap in getting a girlfriend? I'm honestly not even trying. I could go out, try to be more social person, but instead I live like a recluse. I would like to meet a girl, fall in love, get married, have kids, but until I get the motivation to actively pursue it, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I'm honestly in the same boat. I'm 31 now and I get a bit lonely from time to time, but just never get out and do anything about it. Aside from my married friends, my friends my age and relationships seem to always have problems, so it tends to discourage me. Man's not hot. Why can't you get a girlfriend? Perspiration thing? Why can't you get a girlfriend? Nose long like a garden hose. My face. That'll do it. She won't though. I've got the autism. They should make an autism dating app and call it Sperger. Work in a pre-K classroom with two kids. The boy is barely in the spectrum and is articulate for a four-year-old. The girl is probably, but no one's really pinned it till now. Developmental and speech delays covered up. Used to get kind of violent. One day they started playing together. Now they're inseparable. Like, they are the perfect pair. They lay out these intricate little diorama filled with animals. They hoard crap together in the back of the classroom. They can like 70% resolve their own problems, which isn't bad for a pre-K kid. Best of all, they help each other navigate the social fabric of school. Anyway, sort of relevant, sorry. A social life or lack thereof? Here, here. can't date nobody if you don't know nobody. And then it's like can't know nobody if you don't know nobody. Not me, but a friend. He says he's unlovable. I personally think it's really he can't drive, has to spend most of his time taking care of his grandfather and disabled mother, and lives in nowhere, and thus no dating pool. That's a hard life to live. Realistically, he probably won't be able to start a life until they pass. I just don't know like who I am right now. I want to improve myself before I commit to anyone else. Also, the fact is I have feelings for a friend of mine and I really need to get over them. Wow, you just explained my whole situation. Though I feel I still have a chance with my friend. Maybe. I'm married. She kind of frowns on that behavior. I introduced my girlfriend to my family yesterday. My wife was amused. Probably the fear of actually asking a girl out. Practice rejection then. That's a fear all humans have. And the sooner you realize it doesn't actually hurt you, the better. Going into a supermarket, asking if you can make an announcement on the intercom, going to bottle store and asking if you can open a bottle of wine to test it, going to a hotel and asking if they have a free room for you. The sooner you realize that rejection doesn't actually hurt that much, nor does it matter in the long run, the better off you'll be. That would be my inability to look people in the eyes for longer than a few seconds. When I do, it's like that thing in the movies where one person is watching someone else through binoculars and then the person being watched looks back. That's how it feels to me. I always think they have a boyfriend already and won't find me attractive. Didn't stop the guy with my ex-wife now. Why would it stop you? Be daring. Girls like that, you know? I have no experience with relationships whatsoever. Well, every person that's in a relationship now have had that issue at one point in their lives too. I don't ask. I don't advertise my availability. I don't respond to signals. I get along with women fine. Female friends, female colleagues, awesome. Just never let my walls down and have the confidence to make the first move, I guess. Meh, I'm okay with life right now. This and one other describes my situation. I know I'm attractive, I know I'm funny, I have plenty of friends, but man, I'm either too dense when signals are being sent, or it's just not a person I'm interested in. I'm very awkward. You need someone as awkward as you. Just be awkward, be who you are, and eventually you will find someone that likes your awkwardness. It's a nice feeling, being loved, even if you think you can't be loved. Nope. As an awkward person who worked through most of their awkwardness, putting two awkward people in a room together doesn't give either of them common ground to overcome their awkwardness. 
Now you just have two people who don't know how to start a normal interaction doing nothing with each other instead of just one person. Beep beep, I'm fat. If that's your only problem, you're easy off. Start dieting after Xmas and you should be solid by summer. Or take the easy route and date fat women. In this thread, self-describe ugly people and introverts. For the record, you can work on both and most real women will fall in love with a person rather than a body. Actual biggest handicap in this thread? Excuses. You sound like one of those people that tells depressed people to snap out of it. Depression can be diagnosable mental illness. Plain old insecurity has been overcome by millions of people following basic practices that literally unlimited self-help resources can explain to you. Changing starts with you. No one else is going to do it for you. Requires a lot of energy to be around people, let alone people you're meeting for the first time. I'm pretty content being by myself most of the time. Too picky for my own good. And the ones I really like and would marry are too picky for their own good. I'm literally a hunchback, broken vertebrae, not diagnosed, blah, 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 etc. I get lots of cool painkillers at least. I really want to die though. Only reason I don't do it is because my parents are still alive. Really resent them, but oh well, still love them. I do a great job of masking the depression at work, have lots of friends, go out to do stuff. Honestly makes it harder though, seeing people live and love and have normal lives, I just want it to end. I don't have any visible disability and I've been told that I'm handsome. I just don't have the capacity to connect with people apparently. I'm 29, I've never had a girlfriend, I did lose my virginity in my early 20s, but she was an escort so it hardly counts. She also gave me herpes so that mostly put a stop to any sexual future. I used to be suicidal but decided that just because other people find happiness one way through their relationships with other people doesn't mean I can't find happiness another way through my relationship with myself. I'm also alone, no friends, no family, but most of the time I'm pretty happy. I believe it's because I define success in a way that it's able to change moment to moment. The most important aspect of it is my own perception which forms it. I generally define success as living in a way that's positive to me, positive to those around me, and positive to the earth simultaneously. This leaves me a lot of room for interpretation, letting me work on whatever aspects of myself I want. For instance, I like to meditate, I like to paint, I like to think, write, and learn about philosophy. I like to do thorough research, not so that I can convince people of things, but so that I know the truth so that I can make good decisions. I like to self-educate about anything that strikes my fancy. Not because it'll allow me to show off, but simply because I want to stretch my consciousness, to grow and see what I'll become. I don't want to live a shallow life, posting to Instagram and Facebook every 20 minutes. I want to be, above all, a man of substance. I actually think spending so much time alone has helped me with that. It allows me to develop myself in the most genuine way possible. I hope that on my deathbed I'll look back and see that I did everything I could because I was able to determine what was most important to me, developing myself forward with a curiosity for what I'll become. I really hope you can do the same, even if you don't plan to live like a hermit as I have. People are so much more than a relationship or a normal feeling interaction. And you're one of them. A broken vertebrae doesn't change your species. You're more than those things. So much more. We all are. The time I actually spend out in public and or in social places where it is acceptable to meet and flirt in a romantic sense. As someone with a full-time job and relatively reclusive hobbies, video games and miniature wargaming, I tend to head straight back home after work. I do a lot of my shopping online and when I do go out, it is pre-arranged gatherings with mostly guy friends. I don't regret how I allocate my time because I enjoy what I do. It's just something you have to accept about time management. If you don't want to set aside the time and effort to find a partner, you're most likely not going to have one just fall into your lap. By the time I'm interested in more than friendship, the conflicting feelings of enjoying what she and I have and wanting more becomes quite a mess. 
trust issues, I guess. That and an aversion to getting past stage one in the proverbial game. But seriously, you can't have a relationship without allowing yourself to get hurt. Maybe if you meet someone, explain you have trust issues and you're working on them and you want to take it slow. If they betray your trust anyway, take what you've learned and move on. It'll be hard, true, but eventually you'll find someone. I have an incredible talent at asking single women out about a few weeks after they have started dating their eventual husband, but before they have announced it to the world. Guess I'm not putting myself out there enough. I always think that if I meet myself on the street, I would just walk past myself without even noticing. Even at events, I usually keep to myself and my whole presence probably screams, don't talk to me, I'm uninteresting. Which is totally wrong. In reality, I don't consider myself a boring person whatsoever. It's just hard to relay on the outside world. As I get older, my requirements for falling in love are getting more and more strict. I struggle to like people as most people in my life let me down, so it's getting pretty difficult. But really, why is it so hard to find an intelligent, kind, affectionate, moderately attractive, nerdy girl? I class myself as all of those, minus the girl bit, and I can't be alone here. Emotionally unavailable from trying for pretty much my whole life and being rejected constantly except for twice. I feel like there's no hope. When I open up a dating app, I swipe and get matches, but eventually I think, what's the point? I also think I'm super depressed too, which isn't helping that much. I'm starting to think I get a joy out of the pain, so I'm not sure what that says. Been thinking about going to a therapist about it, so there's that. I don't want kids, ever. I'm 32, pretty decent at life, I earn great money, I have lots of friends, I have a really great time. I just haven't met a child-free woman I'm compatible with. I'm always super upfront, there is no chance ever in the world I want kids. At all. I'm more certain of this with every passing day. Now, it would be a bad move for me to keep my mouth shut and get serious with a girl who completely acceptably wants a family of her own. And it would be pretty bad still if she is on the fence because someone's heart is going to get broken down the line. I can't think of anything worse than being trapped either in a relationship where someone wants to start a family but can't or to be trapped starting a family you desperately don't want. The worst part is that if I did accidentally get someone pregnant, I would do the right thing and I'd likely hate it and resent the child for my own error. I'd rather be happy being single than risk ruining two or more people's lives, really. I'm in that sad part of Reddit again. Seriously, why do we click on these threads? 